Hey, hey, what's happening? What's up, Alicia? Hi. <laughs> hey, so this is the beautiful Alicia, and I am Jason. I am on the teaching team here at Gold Creek, and Alicia is on Team Earls. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, Alicia, today is day 53. Ooh, ooh. Go ahead, y'all get it. You made it 53 days in. Do you know what cost 53 cents? I don't know either. Nevertheless, <laughs> you made it 53 days in. So let's keep it going. Let's dive right in. Now, Alicia, I know your favorite book of the Bible is Leviticus, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no. if anybody is making it consistently through the Leviticus, they need some type of reward. Pat yourself on the back. If you don't get a reward, just know your reward's in heaven. Don't even worry about it either. So what did we say about Leviticus? This is when it gets weird because we you know, like, man, we don't even have to follow these rules. Thank God. But it's 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 interesting about Leviticus. Here's what I've always liked, and here's how I make it through the boring stuff. It's what can I pull out of the boring stuff that applies to my life? So in this one, he's talking about diseases. Now, this is a funny chapter for me. Uh, in Leviticus 13, it starts off saying, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if anyone has swelling or rash or disease, come on, somebody. <laughs> so if you got a rash, this is for you. This is, stretch out your hand right now. So. Any rashes, diseases you need to tell me about? <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> discolored skin? I don't think you know, so. if you got eczema, <laughs> this one is for you. If you got a ringworm, this one is for you. So, not really. But here's what he's talking about. Of course, we know that he's talking about leprosy. But know this, know this, that this is an indication that if you have any type of disease, God hears you. God sees you. That's what you got to take away. If they even use this word that we've become accustomed to in in covid culture quarantine what god even knows about quarantine is in, and is concerned the details that they go into about the diseases this is an encouragement get your stuff checked out if you got some rash on your body <laughs> go get it checked out you know if you got a style on your eye like i do right now we need to do something about it that's what i take away and also that god understands and knows about infectious diseases and in the midst of infectious diseases he's concerned about everybody that's pretty tight about leviticus some people are like dang i wanted to skip over this i didn't even take that away there you have it but oh my goodness when we get to mark <laughs> mark is pretty cool alicia i don't know you know mark mark who? <laughs> yeah. mark mark marky mark this is marky mark um so in mark the, I see a, I see a thing. And here's the thing. Now, Jesus was in his hometown and people getting upset about him. Uh, they they were. Let me just point out this verse. It says they were deeply offended and refused to believe him. What? You ever had any friends who don't believe you? <laughs> yes, my teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't your teachers believe you sometimes? Uh, like if. Like, my Chromebook isn't working. <laughs> so I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> Those are excuses. <laughs> right. So here's what they thought. Here's why they didn't believe in Jesus. They didn't believe Jesus because he was from where they were. So I'm like, dude, we know your mama. We know your daddy. Dude, you, you from our neighborhood. People from our neighborhood don't do things well. There's no way that you, Jesus, can be saying all this stuff. So they were offended that Jesus from their town was doing great things for truth and for the kingdom. And Jesus said, yo, a prophet is not without, a prophet is without honor in his own town. So there's some, sometimes even you as a sibling, you've got how many siblings? Five. Good gracious, <laughs> six of y'all, what were your parents thinking? What were they thinking? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so so here's the thing even sometimes your siblings might look down on you or you might even look down on your siblings because they're your siblings and siblings not supposed to say heavy stuff and do great things sometimes that's some families not ours <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless here's what you got to understand regardless of where you're from don't let anybody look down on you don't let where you're from 
prevent you from doing all that God tells you to do. So one, you see in Mark, Mark 6, Jesus saying, if you're from your hometown as a prophet, people not might be offended what you do. Then he goes on in the same chapter and he sends the disciples out. But the disciples, unlike Jesus, didn't see success in his own hometown. The disciples were casting out demons. They were healing people. It's like, yo, they were being super successful. And then you get to the next part where it brings up John the Baptist and Herod and his daughter. Ho, 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 ho. He gave his daughter a present for her birthday. For his birthday. He's like, hey, um, just name anything I could give you. If I'm your dad, if I could give you anything, name it, what would you what would you say? Um, probably a car. <laughs> 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 okay, a car. Do you know what Harriet's daughter said? Did she want it? Um, what did she say? Give me John the Baptist's head. <laughs> Kill somebody. Kind of gross, <laughs> I don't know if I would want that. <laughs> Especially when they killed him, they brought his head out on the platter at a dinner party. Imagine we having a dinner party at the house, and then we bring a you human head. I'm done. Talk about head hog cheese. That's <laughs> <laughs> so here you see John the Baptist, who was doing what God called him to do, and he was murdered for it. So John the Baptist was murdered for it. The disciples saw success in it. And Jesus offended people in his hometown and they didn't believe him. Regardless, and in these three different things, God has called you to do some things and you got to make sure that you do them. And that's when we get into Proverbs, I mean, Psalms 39. And in Psalms 39, my takeaway is this. Life is short. Life is short. And you got to do everything that God calls you to do. If I die right now, girl, I would want you to know that your dad wants you to do everything God called you to do. You know what? I might not live to tomorrow. So, hey, just in case I don't say <laughs> anything else to you, do what God's called you to do. <laughs> and that's the same with you. Life is short. God teaches to number our days because tomorrow's not promised. Life is but a vapor and you'll be gone. And that's all I got. Oh, but before we go, it's only one proverb. So since Proverbs is the book of wisdom, won't you read Proverbs, the last verse, or well, verse 10? Okay. People who wink at wrong cause, wait. <laughs> That's not right. I know. <laughs> people, who, people who wink at wrong cause trouble. Stop right there. So what that means for you is don't wink at them troublemaking boys. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Anything else you want to say before we go? Um, I'll finish the verse. All right, finish it then. But a bold, Don't wink at those boys. That tell you that much. I'm sorry. But a bold reproof promotes peace. That's And that's what I was doing. I was boldly correcting you to cause peace in our household and with these knuckleheads. <laughs> <laughs> that's our time. Day 53. I can't wait to see you successful at day 54. Peace. Bye. <laughs> oh, you're supposed to chunk the deuces. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Goodbye.